Hello guys, Lala Paula the new piece here. Uh, so today I'm gonna basically share with you guys how you guys can uh maneuver around or basically tell you guys what you guys can expect when you build your own website like me. Uh I'm actually build my own portfolio website and in my second version of my portfolio I encounter some problems that basically make me or uh, make me to change my code or basically update my code to something that can be able to handle uh, any kind of feature updates that I want to add into my portfolio. So in my second version of my portfolio, portfolio version 2, which basically live right now at lalapolalanoob.com. The first version is at lalapolalanoob.github.io. That's, that's the first version of my portfolio. The second one is just on my own domain, lalapolalanoob.com. So inside my second version of my portfolio, I can't basically add features of blog inside of it. Uh, because I I count this as uh, a kind of problem which make me not able to implement basically the uh, the block features in it. So in this video, I'm basically going to share with you guys what kind of problem that I face uh, when trying to implement the block features inside my portfolio version 2, which currently what I'm using right now, currently live right now. So in this week, I'm going to uh, update my portfolio v2 to uh, a new version portfolio v3 which I already did some changes and make it to work or able to implement uh, the block features that I need. So why not we uh, start, uh, why not I start and show you guys what kind of problem that I face and how we can basically maneuver around or not actually overcome I can basically say that I overcome the problem, but in code uh, world or a programming world, we know that uh, in one problem, we basically have uh, a various kind of solution you can uh, basically handle that kind of problem. But in my in this uh, sharing session, I'm going to show you uh, one, one kind of solution on how I managed to uh, maneuver around and make it work inside my portfolio v3 so let's start coding okay let's first open your preferred uh, code editor uh, i'm using right now i'm using visual code studio but if you guys use uh, other code editor then just open it uh, i'm using uh, visual code studio right now to code uh, our task that I'm going to share with you guys today. So uh, why don't first we open where we want to place our folder. Just place it anywhere that you like. So I'm going to name this folder like uh, using templating, I guess. So next, what we're going to do is file add folder to workspace. Go to triple W switch for okay. So this is our folder right now. And next thing that we want to do is in need and be an in need. Uh that in this video I'm gonna use uh back end of Node.js uh to show you guys how it works, basically how I overcome my problems in portfolio v2 of adding features of block uh, into something that uh, workable in uh, my version of uh, portfolio uh, or version 3 of my portfolio which will be live uh, at, at the end of this week or before next week comes. So let's cd into our new folder that we just created just now. cd using template and the first thing that we're going to do is npm in need. I just click uh, multiple times of enter over here. Okay. And then you're going to get package.json over here. Okay. The 
uh, basically the package that we need to install or the package that uh, we're going to use as example in this uh, code example, we're going to use uh, and we're going to npm install uh, express. We're going to use express. And also we're going to use cores. And last one, we're going to use not mount. Only these three uh, package that we're going to use in this uh, example of how to tackle this kind of problems. Okay, that's done. Next thing, create our index.js. So inside our index.js, uh, the first thing that we're going to add is our dependencies, right? Dependencies that we just, oops, if I can spell dependencies, and also we're going to have what we call as uh, middle well, middle well, and then for uh, for I for your information, I do like. Uh, doing this kind of thing just to make sure that I put the right comment uh, before I, or just uh, doing some steps before I do something right uh, so that I will know what step that I need to do next right so the next thing that we're going to have is routes our routes and the last one that we're going to have is our uh, server connection Connection. So for our dependencies, first we're going to have our express package. So constant express uh, equal to we're going to require this express and don't forget to read app equal to express and we also have calls just to handle cause problem so constant calls equal to require if i can spell it right a uh, call okay in that string just like that. And then for our middleware, uh, we're going to, we need to have one to handle our calls. So app.use uh, calls inside of here. And we also need a JSON body parser. So before this, we need to include a package to handle this body parser. But right now, Express already have a body parser in it, and you don't need to install a different package to handle this body parser. So we just need to use the Express version of it. So Express dot JSON, just like that. So that's for the middleware. At not yet, and we do have we do need to uh, also uh, declare our static folder app dot use and inside there we're going to use also express static uh, we're going to declare a folder of web or any name or folder if, if you want to use or uh, some people use this or so I'm just going to use web. Uh, why not, right? So the server connection, like any other uh, Express node, we're going to app.listen to what? To port of 5000 and that port 5000, we're going to console uh, the log that we able to get into the server. So server is up and 
running uh, at pot oh, oops pot five thousand it save and the last one that we're going to create is our abracad our route of course obviously so this uh, we're going to create a route of slash block because this is about block how I manage to overcome this kind of problem that you're going to see so it's going to be a async arrow function quest and response so instead of here we're going to let's click console just to see uh, whether this route is working or not if I can spare it by console our route is working it's safe and then what we're going to do next is go to our browser or open any browser i'm using chrome localhost 5000 and just hit and oh but before that we need to run our we need to start our system first right our server so before that go back to your package.json we're going to add a new script over here of start uh, so this script going to use node mon uh, just to make it simple that uh, you don't have to we we basically don't have to refresh every time we make changes into our index.js or basically anything inside node.js so with node mon package uh, it's basically going to refresh it for us every time we hit save or make an, any changes right so this is going to be index.js inside of here so hit save and then click uh, enter to start the server okay cannot from module of express then that means spelling is wrong okay server is up and running so why don't we try to refresh this again slash block oh my bad slash block yeah route is working you can see it here if you try to refresh this again oh in block route is working so we know for sure that our localhost port 5000 slash block is working right now so uh, this is what I do in my portfolio v2 or version 2 that's currently live right now. Uh, I'm uh, the way that Node.js works in my knowledge is that it cannot render or dynamically render a page uh, uh, where it, in the same time you can send data uh, basically any data when rendering a page. So uh, instead of me uh, creating a new uh, like a model or database to handle our block data, why why don't we just create a gimmick data uh, here? So why don't we just create a gimmick block data? If I can spell it right, uh, we're going to create a gimmick block data. So uh, block. We're going to have let block then this this block going to be array of block and inside of this array we're going to have object of post basically right so we're going to have uh id of post one and also we're going to have title of maybe post one simple as that and at least we're going to have a description right so this one is going to be post post one description and we're going to copy this and make some maybe just two more copies it's going to be id3 post three and this should be three too many e and post two two with 
ID of two. So that's gonna be our uh, block uh, data. So uh, this is how I, like I said, or like I mentioned before in Node.js, uh, not that I, not that I'm saying that, saying that I know all about Node.js. No, that's why I'm saying in Node.js, in my knowledge, I just know that we cannot render a page and in the same time we can send uh, data to it like if you do something like uh, it makes sense uh, if you do something like rest dot render basically inside this render we're going to call a page right we're going to call block dot html or something like that and at the same time we can send like data equal to our block right this should work if it like like it makes sense to do something like that but in Node.js, we cannot do something like this. You can see that if I hit save, it give us this uh, unhandled project, blah, 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 all this kind of thing, because it's not going to work. So, uh, and also I have that message because in async, we need to uh, do a try and catch in order to make it not display <laughs> uh error of uh, unhandled promise uh rejection or something like that so uh just make sure that whatever you do in this you have try and you make it or do it inside uh something like code in here and also we have catch you got to catch the error and then inside the error, we're going to rest or uh, rest here, right? So in order for me to basically send data, I cannot do this over here. While rendering a block uh, page, and at the same time, I can send data while rendering it like dynamically. I cannot do this. Uh, something like this. So instead of using this, you can use it if you uh, apply or implement uh, any other package, N not just using the bare bone of uh, uh, just Node.js without any package. So right now we only install Express package, not Mon and also Cost, right? So it doesn't have anything to do with uh, templating or front end framework kind of stuff. So the only way that uh, we can do this, or basically I can do this in my portfolio v2, is that uh, I do something like, uh, so why don't we comment this too? I do, I use uh, rest.send file. I use something like rest.send file, which basically this rest.send file is, uh, uh, enable you to render a uh, static page. So basically, you when you use REST or SEMFA, you uh, basically cannot send data while rendering page. So that's the drawbacks of using just Node.js uh, with no implementation of any other package to handle the rendering part of the page. So uh, this is what I do. So send file. And actually, we need to import another package, which actually we, we do have it already. So we need to import a constant path equal to require. If I can spell it right, require path. So this is how I uh, basically did uh, for my portfolio B2 right now. So rest.send file, uh, we're going to use path.join. So inside this path of join, we're going to pass the parent path plus with uh, views. Uh, block dot html 
and of course I need to create this parent path equal to pass dot resolve where uh, directory name of block of block dot html comma something like that so this should be whenever we want to rest something or respond something this should be in here so if we have if we have oh we don't need to use async if you if you don't want to use async that you we basically uh, basically in this uh we don't have to use async because we uh, don't actually work with uh, data right we don't use any data in here so we don't have we don't basically need to have async in here so i'm going to do something like this and then what we're going to do next is create our block.html right so in our create new folder of views and inside this views folder we're going to create a file of block.html HTML blog dot HTML it's save then just gonna create a boilerplate using the boilerplate boilerplate of HTML is going to have a blog so inside of this we can just do hello world to see whether it's working or not right it's safe and then it refresh on your browsers and you can see that hello world is working so how can basically i or we able to send our block data that we have in our node.js or our backend uh to our page that we have here block.html how can we basically do that if we just use the the bare bone of node.js we don't have any way for us to send our data uh where in the same time we can render the page uh in order for us to do that we need to for now uh, for this part uh, for this purpose of showing you how we can basically maneuver around this problem so right now uh what we can do is that we're going to use fetch so inside our block.html what we're going to do we're going to uh, create a script a script of uh maybe i just need to uh create uh you guys can remember that i already uh declared this use of static folder of web right so we can do we can let's create web folder so inside this web folder this is going to contain all the static uh file so our js our css our image and our maybe you have files on it right that like dot pdf dot doc dot i don't know uh any kind of dot or of static file so inside of here we're going to create a folder of js so inside folder of js we're going to create block dot js so block.html we're going to link it link it with our block.js just get rid of this web in front of here we don't need that uh so block.js so inside our block.js why don't we uh try and see whether it's linked already or not console log it's not king it's supposed to be link okay save open your uh uh in inspect element and open your console over here and then hit refresh yep it's link you can see over here in the console log we are able to console it meaning that our block.js is linked with our block.html but if you leave it like a web in front of this like this 
then it's not going to work. Uh, the fire, it cannot find the file because we already uh, declare the use of static folder of web. So we don't need to use the or extension of web in front of it. So right now it's working. So how can we basically get the data from our Node.js? This is how I do it. This is how my portfolio v2 uh, actually function right now. So why don't we create a function that get the data from the database and this function got to be a async arrow function. So inside of here, I'm going to uh, fetch the data from the database. So there's that await uh, fetch. So inside of here should be the the where the route, right? So constant dot JSON uh, await rest dot JSON and we're going to try to display the data that we get from the database. So where we can get the the data from the, our database. So basically what I did, I just uh, create a new uh, route to handle the sending of the data, uh, not API slash API slash block. So I hit save and make sure to uh, call, obviously run your function over here. Hit save and go back to index.js. So inside my index.js, what I did is I create a, a route to handle, handle the sending of uh, a block, all block posts, basically. So inside there, I'm going to use app.get uh, slash API slash block. And also, this is going to be an async of request and respond arrow function. So instead of here, what I uh, did actually, we going to send data inside. So we're going to use try. Uh, so instead of here, we're going to rest dot JSON, we're going to send data inside of it. Basically, we're going to send data equal to block, our block data, right? And for safety purposes, why don't we send a message of uh, successful along with it? So, copy this and then catch oops wrong wrong key so catch we're going to try to catch the error and if it's unsuccessful 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 so we don't need to send the data we hit save. So inside our uh, data from DB, what we can do is we're going to check whether the message is successful or unsuccessful. So inside of here, what uh, we're able to do is that we're going to check, or maybe we just uh, just do like, we just leave it to see uh, whether we get any any data or not, right? So right now, API block, cannot find it. Why? <laughs> My bad, API, API, and API block. Yep, you can see that we get the data, right? We get the array of the block posts, and also we get the message. So instead of consoling it here, we're going to check it first. So if json dot 
message is equal to successful, then we got to do something. Uh, do something. If else, we're going to alert. Yes. Uh, just alert no data fetch from DB. Something like that. So inside do something over here, what we're going to do, we're going to display our uh, data that we get to our block to HTML over here, right? So why don't we uh, create something in our block dot uh, HTML boilerplate that we have here. So we're going to create div that have class of uh, container. And inside this div that uh, container going to contain all the block posts that we have. So inside here, we're going to div of uh, ID of post ID number like that and inside uh, this each single block post we're going to have h1 gonna be our title net going to be our description or maybe we can just put like title just not to make it uh, confused for us right uh, description something like that and that's all for now so go back to our blog.js script so do something inside of here what we can do actually we can to display our array of posts that all the data all basically all our available posts in our database right so let post uh, and also html template and post are gonna be json dot data json dot data and we're going to use uh for each for each so inside for each you need to have post So instead of here, we're going to call our HTML template with back ticks. And we're going to go to our block.html, copy this template over here, copy and comment this template, paste it over here. Make sure you indent it right. So instead of here, what we're going to do just update this to be post.id copy and this is going to be post.title and this should be our description and the last thing that we're going to do is append the template to UI how we're going to do that is using document dot uh, query selector we're going to select our container up here that contain all the blog posts right so container dot insert uh, adjacent html and we're going to do uh before and comma and passing the HTML template and hit save. So what we're gonna do basically going to display all our data inside of it. Successful make sure you uh okay this should work. We have post one, post two, and post three. Up till now, we uh, didn't 
face any problem uh, just uh, yet. But we going to basically face problems when uh, we try to get or basically get inside a single blog post page. So what if we have like a href uh, like read more, right? If you want to read more about the a blog post, right? So the logic or the mad sense URL should be something that look like this, right? One uh, actually stands for uh, the ID of the blog. So uh, let's say I hit save. This should, uh, if I click read more, it should bring me to localhost 5000 slash blog slash one. So th this URL right, uh, above here actually going to bring me to a single blog post of ID one. Uh, that's uh, what uh, this URL means. So instead of passing one over here, we need to pass the ID of the blog post in order for us to determine uh, which single blog post page that we want to display, right? So inside of here, we just need to pass the blog post ID. So if I click on this blog post ID one, it's going to return one over here, right? If I click two, it's going to be two, and three is going to be three. So this is where the problem lies. So let me show you. What we're going to do next is basically go back to our index.js. Uh, the logic way of doing it is that we're going to create a, basically a, a page to handle the single block post, right? So uh, a route. So get uh, slash block slash, it should be ID, right? Because we basically pass the ID of the block post. And this should be sync. Uh, this should be uh, request and also respond of arrow function and how we can know for sure whether it will go to this uh, url or this route right so why don't we just console log uh just console log uh, single block post uh, route handler save so if I click on this read more on post one, it will uh, it will basically cause a lot in our terminal uh, down here, single block post route handler, right? Yeah, it's working. So we know for sure that it will go to this block dot uh, id, right? So the when uh, what we're going to do next is actually the logic uh, thinking is that we're going to render a single block post page and basically send uh, a data or, or a block post of ID one, right? So uh, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to rest.render uh, something like, this is the logic, uh, uh, logic thinking is that we're going to render a single block post page and also we're going to pass data uh, of block zero, right? We're going to pass data of block zero, but like I said before, like I mentioned earlier, and you guys know already, with using just Node.js, we cannot use rest.render, right? We need to use that what we have up here, send.file. So why don't we do something like that first? We just copy, uh, up here, copy. We just able to render a static HTML file, and then uh, we're going to create another API route that going to handle the sending of the single blog post data. 
So inside our block.id, if I were to do something like this, right? This is going to be my single. Oops, up, up. This is going to be my single block. Uh, dot HTML. This also should be single block. Dot HTML. If I were to do something like this, let's say, why what, what don't we create our single block. Dot HTML. Hit save and then go back to your plot and just copy everything, paste it down here, and then for now, why don't we just uh display a single block uh data paste or save? So if we go back to uh not slash block, if you if we go to any of the posts right here, it should bring us to single block HTML, right? So post one, single block the data. Oh my bad. This should be uh this should be single block also. Fresh. So it will bring us to this single block uh HTML. So the problem lies when even when we create the single block .js, let's say we create uh, a js file to handle the fetching of data of the single block right so instead of a, let's say we have something similar like this we have something similar like this the only problem that we're going to face is that how can we know what ID, what ID of single block post that we uh, have to send over here? How can we know that? The only way that we can know that for sure is that if we go back to our index.js, once user click on this link over here, it will bring us to this uh, route, right? Block.id. So we need to assess this ID over here. So in order for us to assess the ID over here is by quest.rams.id. So if I click on post one, you can see over here in the terminal, it will console the ID of one. If I click, uh, yep, let me, first when this first if i click on id of post 3 it can display the intermediate the id of 3 so the problem is that i have i basically have like no way for me to pass this information or this request params the id that i get from User clicking this link that we have here, post one, post one, post three on read more link. We don't have any ways for us to send this in crucial information to our single blog post.html. That's the problem. So we cannot use uh, this kind of uh, ways that we treat uh, with our blog.html. Because in block the HTML, we know for sure that if we call if we call slash block that we're going to display all block. We know for sure all block that available in our uh, website. That's why we can declare our route API is going to be API slash block. This it doesn't distinguish between all block posts. We're just going to display all block posts available. So in our index.js, we can create API slash block and we can return all the block that we have in our database so if we only if we don't have any kind of uh what we can say uh ways for us to display uh a single blog post data then how can we maneuver around this the only way that we can do this is actually 
in our uh we're going to display it doesn't matter if we if you click on post one post two or post three it will brings you guys to single block html so just we're going to leave it as it is here so the only thing that we can basically adjust is that in our single block or we can do something like this we have to do it like manually so inside our uh, block dot uh, html or block dot js inside of here is going to be our id right post id one two three blah 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 so we going we need to create this have to be three route so this should be two and this should be three and this should be single block that going to post the uh, id of one this is going to be post id of two and this is going to post id of three yeah that's basically the only way for me to make this work so even after i did this so in my single block html let's say this this is single block uh one html let, let me sh just show you guys so why don't i just uh rename this uh to be one and i also going to create a new one uh single block is going to be two dot html which is going to create two so cop i'm going to copy all of this and paste this also here then this is going to be single block post two this one is going to be single block post one and also this one i'm going to rename it as uh, block post one save and then for the sake of showing you guys how it works, why don't we just create a new one? Yes. Copy all of this. Copy. This is also over here. So uh, instead of here, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to uncomment this. And this also we're going to uncomment this. And this API gonna be the second one. This one gonna be the first one. So inside our index.js, we need to create this that we have over here to handle one and also handle two. And also to handle three, yeah, you know, you know that by now. So inside there, we're going to send only the first one, and this is how I can basically do it manually. So if I hit refresh over here, post one, and that's for each function. Uh, let me check this first. Single block post one, uh, single block data or post one. One, uh, uncut in promise type error post the for is not function. Single block post one. So post is not a function. Why don't we try to console log first? our post see whether we have it here or not oh, okay that's mean that uh the one that we send is not array so that then what we just need to do is comment this array or just get this all first copy 
for that. Just get rid of this array. And with that out of the way, uh, instead of post, we need to use post over here. Copy, paste, and also paste over here. We don't need to have it over here. And we're going to do the same thing in our uh, block, single block to the JS, right? So this have to go away, paste it. So if you click right, it's going to push single block to JS. Yep, we'll post our post one. If we go back to post two, you we'll go to single block post to page. Uh, post to page. We have to do something. We need to do uh, something like this. So basically, this is not uh, a right, the right way to do it. If you want to do something like that, then uh, you know for sure that this is not the right way when you have to do it right all the thing manually right so in order for us to change this or in order for me to make this work uh, in order for me to add uh, a block features into my portfolio v2 which is going to be my portfolio v3 so what i did is just implement and apply a package called ejs embedded javascript template so let's start uh, coding this or basically make the changes. Uh, go to our terminal down here and get out or stop our server. So the only thing that we need to add or basically install a package, we just need to add new or just one package actually. So npm install ejs. Hit enter and let it download. It's not going to take a long time. So go right above and include our new, or basically we're going to require uh, the new added EJS or in order for us to make it work, we need to require that, that EJS package. But uh, that's going to be in our middleware. So in our middleware, we're going to adjust our EJS. So how to do it is basically simple as using app.set. Then set going to be our view, or if I can spell it right, view engine. And that's going to require EJS. Okay, that's that. So next, what we're going to do is going to change a little bit of our code inside of here to make it more dynamic or basically change it to how EJS works. So instead of doing all this, so basically uh, you create a path and render a static HTML file. So instead of doing that, we, we just need to use this rest or render just copy this one path paste it over here comment this we, we don't need this anymore and so we're going to render a block and we also going to send a data of block and also what we're going to do we need this message over here copy and then also paste it inside of here save okay so if uh, something bad happen or if some uh, we have error then we're going to send the error to the block page again and also send uh, message of unsuccessful but we don't need to send uh, the 
Eh, we can actually send it, uh, the data if they do have the error. Or maybe set the error, right? Something like that. So why don't we try to run it, block, to see whether it's working or not. Save it, enter. Oh, first, don't forget to run your system first, npm start. Right away, you can see that we have failed to look up view block in views directory. The reason is that uh, when using a package, this package, especially the EJS package, you call this block, but this block, uh, it, it called the block with extension of .ejs, not .html. So our block .html, we actually need to change it uh, to ejs. Hit enter, hit save. And then instead of here, we don't actually need our block. This part of code, we don't need that anymore. And maybe we can start uncomment this for now. And just, hello, see it's working or not. Refresh, yep, it's working. That's how we basically uh, dynamically render a page. And at the same time, we can send data when rendering the page. And we know for sure that we have the data and how we can we access this uh, block data actually, and also this message, how can we access? So if you have experience of using bad pen word like PHP, or if you don't use any, or if you don't use any PHP pen word like E2, Laravel, or just the bare bone of PHP, when you, create uh, a PHP to work with HTML, you have this so-called of uh, the limiters where if I type this, uh, you know that this, this part of code uh, with uh, less than a sign, a question mark, cool question mark, more than sign, this is what we call as the limiters. The limiters, if I can spell it right for you the limiters or something like this. Ah, yeah. This is called the limiters. This is a the limiters. The limiters is dependent on what kind of programming language that you use. If PHP, then it's going to look like this. But uh, what we are using right now is JavaScript. So JavaScript is a little bit different, but not so, not, not a big changes, but a little bit different from uh, PHP delimiters. So delimiters for JavaScript, uh, especially this uh, EJS, we use percentage instead of question mark. If I can type it right. So if we were to uh, call our data, hit save and refresh, it will display our object, 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 object. Uh, that's why uh, that's uh, our data actually, but is in 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 form of uh, array of object, right? So, uh, why don't we? Oh, maybe we can access our message. Yeah, we have message successful. So, like we did in our blog.js, we check first whether the message is successful or unsuccessful, whether we do that first. So we can do it here. So uh, if you use equal right after this M, uh, percentage sign, meaning that you want to get the value of the data that you send, but, and then it will display this successful data, uh, we, that what you can see on, on the browser. But if you don't use uh, the equal sign, then it will not uh, basically uh, display the data, but it will run your code actually. So this we're going to do it if uh, message equal to successful, like we did before in our blog.js, since we don't use any script like we have inside of here, we straight away use it in here so we can do something like this. So if successful, then we're going to display the data. If not successful, then we're going to display something else for sure, right? 
Uh, so if successful, then we're going to display this that we have over here. Uh, and send and else if not successful that what we can do for now we're going to display h1 of uh, no data fetch uh, from db yeah and close this else function so instead of here, we're going to display our um, blog post, all uh, blog posts available. So we're going to do the same thing. In here, we use for each, right, to display all because it's an array. So in here also, we're going to use for each. So yeah, open again. And then we're going to call uh, data, our array of object. Uh, for each, for each, and inside that we're gonna have post, each post, and then we're gonna open this. Close it, or close it like that, and this all should be inside of this right something like that it's close so instead of this we're just going to change it as that we did earlier so this one post uh, dot id uh, copy this uh, and then our Title gonna be copy this, paste this, description gonna be description. Yep, and I think we, yeah, we also have this right. Uh, the over here and change this to. Just okay. Oh, I should just copy this first. And we need this ID that we have over here and change it. It's safe. Then try. Yeah, we have it work like before. So this is how we use EJS, but now we're just doing the all blog posts uh, available, right? Uh, our concern is that uh, how we can uh, basically change our code to make it work for single blog post. So uh, right now we're going to change our single blog post, go back to our index.js. But before that, why don't we close our single blog, all single blog.html, single blog.js. We don't use this anymore, don't use this. So we only have this. So instead of here, we have this right over here, block the ID. So instead of using or use something like this, we can just copy. Maybe we just copy over here. We just copy this, paste it below, and then we're going to use the params that we just did now. And this one we don't to call our single block page copy single block page and after that what we're gonna do next is uh we're going to create our single block page dot ejs right so gonna view New file, single block dot EJS. Hit enter. Just copy all from block dot JS. Paste it down, but without the read more. Hit save. 
go back to our index.js. So instead of uh, instead of sending all the block information, right? All block posts available, we want to send uh, only the uh, the requested post ID that send uh, uh, together with the URL, right? So if I click post one, so the params or the ID inside it should be one, right? So to do that, what we need to do is just uh, we're going to use let post. Basically, we're going to get only the post that we need. So this is going to be block dot. We're going to use block dot filter where we're going to get post, which this post should is where this filter going to uh return us post ID that equal to the request dot params dot ID that will pass uh, by the URL above. So instead of here, we just change this to post. Copy and hit save. So let's try to see whether it's okay or not. So if I hit post one, then it will uh, bring me to the single block dot EJS there where it can, it will post the only the, why don't I just hit H1 or maybe uh, H2 over here, uh, single block uh, post page. Hit save. Hit one, single block post page one. Oh, instead of here, data post one. Hmm, we have some error that in it, it, it goes to single block post page, but it doesn't uh, display our data in here. Let's see. Why don't we just, why don't we see first uh, whether the data is being passed or not. Message, save, save. Yeah, it's successful. Meaning that it goes inside of here, but it didn't run this uh, for each. So hit save over here. Okay, we have problems that we need to tackle over here. Post the ID data. So we send post post the ID. We send a post of okay. Why don't we check it here first? Console.log uh, post. Save. And then refresh it again. Ah! No post. We got no post. Why? Why, guys? Ah, oh. oh no, I think we need to check it first. Why don't we check it? Uh, console.log our params, uh, request dot uh, not body the params dot id to see whether the id is being passed or not. If there is no id passed, then uh, if you can compare it here, it will return. Error, right? But it doesn't return the error, so that's confused me. Uh, okay, it returns one. So next thing that we're going to check to see whether this uh, ID that we have if been written is in form of a uh, type of what string numbers. We need it to be in numbers because it's ID that we compare it with our post ID. This one is in numbers, and this one should be in numbers. Should not be. Uh, a string, right? But because this one is, yeah, I think this is a string, right? 
why don't we just see it first? Uh, type of. Oh, we cannot use something like that. I think why don't we check it first? Uh, uh, check if string. Uh, JavaScript. La type of type or okay okay my bad I'm using the capital O it should be just uh normal oh my bad okay just copy yeah so it's written string but we need it to be uh an uh, uh, basically a number so in order for us to change the type we just need to add plus in front of it and then it will change to uh, type of uh, if you don't believe me it will change to number type okay, plus here yep it's going to change to number instead of string so that's how we're going to use it and you can see for sure if i refresh it will return post one post one description if you go to post two post two post two description post three post two description this is how ejs makes uh or basically able to dynamically render a page while in the same time we're able to send data when rendering the page it's much more simple or much more a compiled version of what we're doing uh, right before this using just node.js without any other package to handle this kind of rendering so instead of uh, you, uh, creating all this kind of uh, unnecessary bunch of code over here we can basically delete all of these but we have only these two maybe you can make it much more uh, okay something like this okay uh, it should be something like this and we don't use the path over here it's safe that it should work the same. Okay, if you just imagine if you have like many that, that a lot of blog posts, right? Uh, I'm I'm I've been meaning to uh create a lot of uh posts in my in order for me to uh instead of uh, using articles in LinkedIn, I'm, I I want to create a blog post inside my own website my portfolio website right so if i use uh the previous styles without using this or implement this ejs package you can imagine that how many uh route that i need to create in order for me to handle uh, all kind or basically 10 10 posts if i have 20 posts then i have to create 20 routes to handle that 20 posts but if you use a uh, templating that like I used just now using EJS, it doesn't matter if you have a lot of posts like 20, 30, 40, or maybe 100 posts that you have. This one route over here, it can handle as many posts as, as you like, as you want to create. So this is how I basically manage to find a solution or uh, to my problems of uh, adding plot features into my portfolio v2 as i mentioned to you guys i create my portfolio v2 uh, with uh, the intention of uh, building a, a, a website and not using any kind of front-end framework or any kind of template just uh, use my own styling my own uh, vanilla javascript my own html css all kind of things i create it from the scratch so in node.js i only use uh, a simple package just uh, focusing on using node.js only uh, no other packages uh, implement or apply to my portfolio v2 but once i try to add a block inside my portfolio v2 i came over this this problem that I did I, I I just showed you guys and managed to find a solution to it. 
So uh, by implementing EJS or any kind of uh, templating, like uh, for example, actually is uh, there's a lot of uh, template uh, templating out there uh, instead of uh, other than other than what we call it uh, as EJS. If you go to this link over here, uh, we have what the best alternative to EJS. We also have a uh, uh, mustache.js. Basically, all kind of templating that work like EJS, right? So we have, the popular one is EJS that that I just uh, the package that I just show you just now and uh, handlebar. This one also uh, popular. But other than that, uh, I, I don't know for sure whether it's popular or not, but the, those two are the popular one that I did get uh, uh, to see other YouTubers show me or show uh, people how to work around using that, that package. Uh, let's go for the templating. If you want to know the difference between uh, just use the vanilla JavaScript or uh, Templating or maybe a framework, front end framework. That, that's actually uh, there's a difference between front end framework and also templating. Templating is not a uh, complicated uh, workaround. You can, if you can see as a uh, the learning curve of you learning how to use uh, templating is much more easier than you want to go straight and learn how to use front end framework. So right now, uh, I'm just uh, I'm in the process of learning to be a full-stack developer in JavaScript, which JavaScript is not a programming language that I'm used to when I'm when I'm uh, using PHP programming back in the days. Uh, I I I didn't uh, have a, a lot of experience on coding in JavaScript. Uh, a lot of my time I just code in PHP. So this. Uh, this year is the year where I learned a lot about, about JavaScript. That's why I start learning JavaScript uh, from the vanilla version. And then right now, after I encounter uh, problems like want to add uh, block features into my website, I just know that uh, at some point, you need to upgrade or update your code in order for it to work. To, uh, in order for it to work uh, for a new function or features that you want to add in the future. So uh, I can definitely say for sure that uh, after this, I need to learn how to use front-end framework like uh, Vue.js, React, which basically is a system rather than templating, just a simple uh, implementation that you can do for your website so my suggestion or my recommendation is that when you uh, a beginner of learning javascript uh, just uh, just why don't you just try and create your own website using just vanilla javascript and then along the way you will uh, catch up and uh, you will learn about templating like what i learn right now using js and after that you can progress to learn about Front-end framework, your first front-end framework. But if you want to straight away go to front-end framework uh, instead of use templating like EJS, just go for it. Uh, there's no right or wrong ways for you to learn uh, new things. So that's all, guys, for uh, today's video or this uh, sharing session of mine. Uh, just wanting to you guys to know what kind of problem that you might face when you put when you build everything just using vanilla javascript without uh, embedding or without uh, implement uh, other package that able to help you make your system or your website uh, much uh, better or much smoother so uh, that's all for uh, this week videos this week youtube videos uh, like always uh, thanks for being here thanks for listening also thanks for viewing this video until next time or i can say until next week salam
Tchau.